of the things that I like to do with a brownie, I don't know if you saw that when I had, had it before, but with these pans, I always like to do a foil lined pan and then you can, it's easier to cut and you're not worrying about um, cutting your pan. Of course, the best thing to do with brownies, no matter what kind they are, is to cut them with a plastic knife because even when they're warm, if you cut regular brownies with a plastic knife, you won't get that. <laughs> so I like to foil uh, line the pan just so it's a little bit easier to, to do. And the best way to do this is to take your foil, and it really doesn't matter what side up, whether it's the shiny side or dark side, and just put it on the bottom. Turn your pan over, and it fits exactly in there. So you're not struggling to try to mash it all in there. Isn't that, a, isn't that the, like the neatest trick? Yeah. So you're not like pushing it down and then always in the corners it, get, it gets ripped or whatever. So, And I do spray this a little bit just so that um, it doesn't stick on the foil. Okay. I'll spray that now. So we're starting with our brownie mix here. And I like to, the, the original recipe, I think I changed a little bit. The original recipe called uh, for the brownie mix and um, softened butter. I don't like to do that. Whenever you're making um, anything that can go in a food processor, it's always easier to start with cold butter and it'll crumb up a little bit easier than if you started with the soft butter. And what you're kind of looking for is just incorporating the, bu the uh, butter into the brownie mix. All right, so I like to do this in a food processor. Then we're going to put the whole brownie mix in. Put our whole stick of butter in. And I just cut it in little um, pieces so it's easier to in incorporate that. got that all the butter all incorporated and if you don't however if there's parts that there's still a lump of butter you can just sort of mash it up with your fingers but you can see pretty much all the lumps are gone you've got all the butter incorporated and this is this is great to do if you're doing like a crumb crust because it's a whole lot easier to press this into a pan than it is to have that sort of soften butter, gloppy stuff, and try to do that, and it's all over your hands and everything. All right, we're gonna take a cup of this to save for the topping. And we're going to mix in two eggs and our milk. And it works the same as just using the plain uh, brownie mix then. And with brownie mixes, you know, you don't want it to beat it to its, even though it says well blended, you don't want it to be really smooth because that just sort of flattens out your brownie.
spread this in the bottom of your pan. Can you see that? And you have to just be a little bit more gentle than you would in a regular pan with the foil, but yeah, you can live with it. Okay, that's the bottom layer. Now for the middle layer, we're gonna use two cream cheeses. Okay. There's our cream cheese and um, our coffee. And all this is, is just regular instant coffee. It's just gonna give it a little coffee flavor. Um, our almond extract. So we got our coffee and our almond extract. And our marshmallow cream. Now I got the value time marshmallow cream, because I imagine marshmallow cream's about the same in all the different brands. But I like this because uh, it's a container with straight sides, so it's much easier to get it out of the container. You know, if you look at the marshmallow cream jars, they're kind of shaped like that. It's the same amount, but this is so much easier to get out. So we're going to put that in there. Okay, I'll let that mix up a minute. So I think we've got everything there. We've got our crumbs, which we're going to mix with um, the walnuts for our topping. So here's our cup of walnuts that I chopped up and the cup of the um, brownie crumbs. We're just going to kind of mix them up a little bit. That'll be our topping. All right, oh, that's pretty good. Okay, and that we're gonna put on the top of this. It's a little trickier, so I like to drop it by little glops. And then when you just have a lot of patience, and you can relax, just kind of spread this out. I'm gonna miss the bus. And then you can tell them how you walked to school when there was 10 feet of snow. For time's sake, we're going to call this good enough. All right. And we're going to put our crumbs on the top of that. Okay. Now this is ready to go in the oven. So we're gonna cook that for about 30 minutes. Bake it at, um, what does it say, 350? 